Hello, Data Pros, and welcome back to another exciting video in our Databricks Learning Series. In the last video, we explored different ways to ingest data into Databricks, especially into the first layer of the medallion architecture, which is bronze. Today, we're picking up from where we left off and transforming that bronze data to populate the remaining two layers, silver and gold. I've split this video into two parts. In the first part, we'll start with some easy-to-follow employee datasets to understand how transformations and data processing work in Databricks. Then, in the second part, we'll see how transformations are handled in this real-world order management system project use case. Here's the employee dataset I was referring to. Let's assume a company has two branches, and each branch maintains employee details and employee job history as separate tables. The employee table stores basic details like name, age, salary, and so on. On the other hand, the job history table keeps track of all the roles each employee has held while working at the company. So, in total, we have four datasets. All right, let's dive into Databricks and go through the most frequently used transformations one by one using these employee datasets. For simplicity, and to make it easier for you to practice, I've placed these datasets as CSV files in the workspace path itself. Now, diving into the notebook, we start by defining the base file path and reading the employee and employee job history datasets for both branches. We're loading these files directly into their respective data frames. Let's take a quick look at the data available in the data frames. Here's a preview of the employees from branch A, followed by branch B. Similarly, we have job history records for both branches. This gives us a sense of what we're working with before we start transforming the data. Next, we import the necessary functions from PySpark, which will help us perform various transformations. The first transformation is typecasting. By default, all the columns are read as strings. We need to update the data types for certain columns to enable proper processing. We convert the age column to an integer, salary to double, and join date to a date format for the employee datasets. Similarly, for job history, we convert the start and end dates to proper date types. Now that the data is in the correct format, let's move on to union transformation. Since both branches store employee data separately, so we union the employee datasets together. We do the same for job history. This gives us a single dataset for employees and another for job history, making further processing much easier. Next, we join these two datasets based on employee ID to bring in job history details alongside employee records. This helps in understanding each employee's job transitions and overall work history. If you're new to union and join, here's a quick way to understand them. Union stacks the records from two datasets into one. But both datasets must have the same columns, and the final dataset will also have the same structure. On the other hand, join works differently. It takes each record from the first dataset, finds the matching record from the second dataset using a key, and combines them side by side. This means the datasets can have different columns as long as there's a key to connect them. We've used an inner join here, but there are other types of joins. I'd recommend taking some time to explore them on your own. As you can see here, by using union and join transformations, we have merged four different datasets into a single dataset. Now that we have everything in one place, let's move on to the filter transformation. This filter condition ensures that only rows where the salary column has a value greater than 50,000 are retained. From here, we use the select transformation to keep only the relevant columns. Alternatively, you could achieve the same result by dropping the unnecessary fields. You can go with whichever approach feels more appropriate to you. Then, we sort the data by employee ID and start date in descending order. This ensures we always see the most recent job history at the top for each employee. Next, we need to remove duplicate records, keeping only the latest active role for each employee. This way, we work with unique employee records without any duplication. Now, let's create a new derived column to calculate the years an employee has been in service. We use the join date and compare it with today's date to get the total years of service, which is helpful for workforce analysis. Handling missing values is also important. We drop records where the role is missing since that's considered a critical piece of information. 
And for other fields like age, if there are any missing values, we replace them with zero to maintain consistency. Next, we apply a conditional transformation to make the gender values more understandable in reports and dashboards. We replace M with male, F with female, and any other values will be replaced with other. Finally, let's perform some aggregations. We calculate the average, minimum, and maximum salary for each role, which provides insights into salary distribution across different job positions. And with that, we have our final transformed data sets. Here's a quick look at the fully transformed employee data, and here's the aggregated salary data. We're just displaying the data here, but these data frames can be loaded into Databricks tables, as shown in this commented cell, which can then be used for creating BI reports and dashboards. Please note, Databricks supports not just Python, but also SQL, Scala, and R. So, if you're more comfortable with SQL, you can use SQL syntax to perform the same transformations we just did with Python. You can go through this notebook if SQL is your preferred method. I've included all the code we show here in the GitHub. Check out the link in the description. This now brings us to the second part of the video. As we now know how to bring data records into a data frame and perform all sorts of transformations, let's move into a slightly more complex real-world project use case. In large organizations, data architects, data modelers, or even data leads often create data models like this and data mapping documents that look something like this. Generally, these two are inputs for data engineers and developers. Let's first focus on the bronze to silver transformation. Upon closer inspection, we can see that we bring customer and product related tables as is, without many transformations. We also generate an entirely new table for dates. Apart from these, the major transformations are done in the order table. We take the order JSON column and unpack the JSON fields into two separate tables, one named orders and the other order items. To give you better clarity, the orders table will have one record for each order, while the order items table will have one record for each product or item purchased in that order. All right, let's dive into this Databricks notebook and explore these silver layer notebooks. For the customer, product, product category, and product subcategory tables, the approach is pretty straightforward. We bring these tables from the bronze layer as is into the silver layer. This means no major transformations are applied to the customer and product related tables. They're simply moved over to the silver layer, but with a timestamp added to track the loading time and a process ID for future auditing. These fields allow us to trace when records were loaded and identify who loaded them, making it easier to perform root cause analysis and implement the necessary fix. For the date dimension, things are a bit more interesting. We create a date range as required and use that to populate our date dimension table. This table is essential for any analysis that requires time-based calculations like day of the week, month, quarter, and year. Additionally, we also calculate whether the date falls on a weekend or not. All these silver tables that we have seen so far are loaded in batch mode, meaning we will run or schedule these jobs maybe once in a day or as required. Next, we move on to orders. The order data is a bit more complex. Here, we unpack a JSON column from the bronze layer that contains all the details of the orders and their items. We split it into two separate data frames, orders and order items. Also, if you take a closer look, we've used structured streaming to read data from the bronze Databricks table in real time. All order-related notebooks in the bronze, silver, and gold layers are designed to run continuously. This means that as soon as a new order file is created in cloud storage, it will be ingested into the bronze layer using autoloader and transformed into the silver and gold tables using structured streaming, all in real time. This ensures that our BI reports always reflect the latest, most up-to-date order data. For the order items, we need to create a unique ID for each record. Since an order can have multiple items, we can't just rely on the order ID alone. So, we create a unique order item ID by hashing two fields, the order ID and the product ID. Our analytics team is mostly interested in daily, weekly, or monthly dashboards and reports. To support this, we take the order timestamp and convert it into a date ID, making it easy to group the data by day, week, 
month, or any other date range with the help of date dimension table. We then load the transformed data into the silver layer using delta format, ensuring the data is saved in a way that's optimized for analysis. We even use checkpoints for streaming data, which helps to ensure we don't lose any progress in case of failures. Now that we've covered the silver layer transformations, let's move forward and explore the gold layer transformations. The gold layer is all about presentation, optimized for read-heavy operations and reporting. To meet these needs, we've used a star schema, which is perfect for this type of setup. At the center, we have the daily sales fact table, surrounded by the dimension tables for date, customer, and product. Upon closer inspection, we've denormalized the three product tables from the silver layer into a single consolidated product table in the gold layer. On top of that, we've joined and aggregated the orders and order items tables into the daily sales fact, enabling us to efficiently analyze sales data. The normalized silver layer data model is optimized for easy data loading and update operations. On the other hand, the denormalized star schema in the gold layer supports efficient query and report execution. In other words, it's optimized for read-heavy workloads. Let's jump into the Databricks notebook and explore how these transformations are applied in the gold layer. We start with the customer table. We read the data from the silver layer, perform basic transformations like renaming columns, and then load the clean data into the gold table. Next, for the date dimension, we read the silver data and load it into the gold table with minimal transformations. For the product data, we join the product, product category, and product subcategory tables from the silver layer using the relevant keys, subcategory ID and category ID. This consolidates the product information into a single table in the gold layer, helping avoid additional joins that could impact query performance. Moving forward, let's talk about order data. We start by reading streaming data from the silver tables for orders and order items. Since these are two different streams and there is a possibility of some delays, so we apply watermarks, giving each dataset a two-minute tolerance for late records. Next, we join the orders and order items datasets on order ID. Once joined, we perform an aggregation over five-minute windows to calculate key metrics like items sold and sales amount. A surrogate key is then created using key attributes. Finally, the process data is loaded into the gold table, making it ready for reporting and analysis. After completing these ingestions and transformations, we can now check the resulting tables in the Databricks catalog. Everything looks perfect. The BI reporting team can now use these gold tables to create reports and visualizations. That's exactly what we will be covering in our upcoming video. That's all for today. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. Thanks for watching.